Hello students, in this video we'll derive formulas for the deltas of call options and put options. Let's recall that Black-Scholes gives us a formula for a call option, namely the premium of a call option is S e to the negative delta t n of d1 minus k e to the minus rt n of d2 where we have our formulas for d1 and d2 so our formula for d1 so d1 is going to be the log of s over k plus r minus delta plus one half sigma squared t minus t over sigma square root t minus t. And then the d2 is the same as d1 with a negative sign here. So if I want to do the d2, so d2 is the log of s over k plus r minus delta minus one half sigma squared t minus t over sigma square root t minus t. Now we know there's a relationship between these things over here. So if, if phi of x is e to the negative x squared over 2 over the square root of 2 pi, which is just the PDF of a normal 0, 1 random variable, then we've seen previously that s e to the minus delta t phi of d1 is k e to the minus r t phi of d2. So we'll use this formula in conjunction with Black-Scholes to derive the delta of a call option. So recall that the delta of the call option is the derivative of the call option with respect to the price s. So we can do it over here. So if we do the derivative of this formula, that'll be the derivative with respect to s of s e to the negative delta t n of d1. And then we'll have a minus k e to the minus r t n of d2. And so now we see that let's underline the terms that depend on s. So over here, this clearly depends on s. This e to the negative delta t does not. This n of d1 depends on s because d1 has an s in it. And then we have a k e to the minus rt. There's no s's there. But I have an n of d2. So those three terms are the terms that depend on s. And those are the terms that need to be differentiated. So we'll need to do the product rule in the first term. So this will be by the product rule just e to the negative delta t n of d1. And then I'll have a plus s e to the negative delta t n prime of d1 times partial of d1 with respect to s by the, by the chain rule. And then we'll have, those are my practical terms, and I'll do this term over here. I'll have a minus k e to the minus r t, and then an n prime of d2. And then I'm going to have a partial d2, partial s. So let's continue. So now I need to examine what partial d1, partial s, and partial d2, partial s are. So if we look at these formulas, we see that none of these things over here depend on s. So note. partial d1 with respect to s. If we look at it, we'll have the log of s over this factor over here. So I'll have, if we simplify this, I'll have a log of s minus the log of k over this factor. So I'll just have a 1 over s times 1 over sigma square root t minus t. And if I look at d2, the only difference between d1 and d2 is this negative sign over here where there's no s's. So we see that this is also partial d2 partial s. So this relationship is extremely useful. So now what we can do is we continue our calculation. Our calculation now tells us that this will be e to the negative delta t 
n of d1 plus, I can factor out this term over here and this term over here are exactly the same. So that'd be plus partial d1 partial s. And then I'll have an s e to the negative delta t. And now the derivative of the cumulative distribution function of a normal zero one is phi. So this will be phi of d1 minus k e to the negative rt phi of d2. And so now by our relationship over here, these two quantities are equal, so this entire expression is zero. So we see that the delta of a call option is exactly equal to e to the negative delta t n of d1. Now we'll see in further videos how put call parity can be used to find the delta of a put option from this. Thank you very much.